Chrome OS is one of the most badly misunderstood operating systems on the market right now. Most people know I use Windows, Linux, and Mac uh, on a daily basis. Now, Chrome OS, I have not been using on a daily basis. And frankly, before I grabbed this guy right here, this little ThinkPad Chromebook, I never used Chrome OS in my life. But what I thought was it was just for, you know, folks that only wanted a web browser or only wanted to maybe edit a couple documents or for school kids because they're so cheap. They're like $200 a laptop. But wow, was I wrong. And I see something in Chrome OS that is a bit scary for some, but also I see it taking over a lot of the desktop space uh, because of what Google's doing with Chrome OS. And it's, I would say, an underappreciated masterpiece. I mean that title because there's so much stuff you can do with it today that people just frankly don't even know about or just are not looking into. But I see what Google's doing in the background. So let me enlighten you because it's pretty damn impressive. So first up on the desktop of Chrome OS, it's pretty much Android in a computer, or at least that's how most people think of it. You go to the Play Store, you download whatever it is. All the settings are pretty much contained in Google Chrome. You can't uninstall Google Chrome as you see here. Uh, and if you add any other browsers like Brave Browser, the stock Brave Browser is actually just the phone version, which who's going to use a phone version browser on their computer? It's just a terrible experience. So don't install Brave through the Play Store. But this version of Brave is a bit different. But before we get into some of the tweaks I've done, the actual layout and how this feels is something that is very cohesive, very fast everything just works together. It's an extremely polished experience for what everyone has said it's used for, which is schoolwork, browsing the web, and just basic operation. I'm on battery power because I know this thing's gonna last like 12 hours, even with heavy usage. <laughs> it's just a really well put together system, very polished. Everything just works. You plug in an external one to mirror a screen like I'm doing right now, it just works. There's no other issue with it. But a lot of people stay where that is, and they just don't really go much past it. They might install, go to the settings here, and then do like the dev kit, which if you come down to about Chrome OS, you can change your actual uh, branch that you're on. I'm on the dev branch, but I've gone on the beta and other things, and it's, it's fine. But come into here, you can change the channel you're on. Personally, uh, it doesn't really matter to many. I would say go at least beta channel because there's so many cool things coming out on Chrome, but I obviously want to see the bleeding edge, so I'm on dev. Other things, this setting menu is not the greatest. Honestly, it kind of sucks because it's not really laid out in any form or fashion, but let's say I want to install Linux uh, on it, and we can just go Linux and just search for that Linux development environment. We can actually enable all that right here, or we could remove it. Uh, with a click of a button, just searching everything through the settings is pretty much how you get around. And the Linux portion of it is really where Chrome OS unlocks and most people just forget about all the extra things it can do. You look down here and you'll notice I have Steam, I have like a code, VS Code here, which is what I use a lot. Right here is a little startup. Now the stock one that is installed on Chrome OS is Debian based, which is an older version of Linux. And that's fine and all, but for me, that older version of Debian gets most of the tools I want, but I wanted to do some gaming and other things that Chrome OS is really not meant for. And being on that bleeding edge of the dev channel, I also wanted to be on the bleeding edge of the Linux. And where it shines is its VM and containerized storage which most people don't talk about when it comes to Chrome OS. And if I do a NeoFetch, I'm gonna just show you what I've done so far. I've ripped out that Debian, I've installed Arch Linux in this environment, and it uses some really interesting bleeding edge virtualization technology in Chrome OS, and they're developing even more of this technology. A, a good example of my utilization of it is, well, anything I install on this Arch-based system, like the Brave browser I have installed right here, 
Well, that Brave browser is the full desktop browser. It's not some crappy Play Store browser. It's installed through my Linux and reflected in the Chrome OS environment. Same goes with the VS Code. That's not just some weird Play Store version of it. This is just the full version as you would do on any desktop. This unlocks a lot of things because Linux itself is so powerful with as many programs you have. You can do a lot of stuff. It is basically supercharging your computer because you can do so many different things. The problem is people get lost in a lot of the options. But tacking this onto Chrome OS, I have seen very little performance loss between a lot of these apps, except when it comes to graphics acceleration, which I'm gonna to touch on. But before we get into graphics acceleration, there's some things that aren't passed through quite well on this system. In the settings here, you can go ahead and say, hey, I want all these shared folders to be pushed here. You can push certain devices to the Chromebook, such as USB controllers or that type of thing, so you can play Linux games on Chrome OS. Not stock yet, because we still need to touch on that GPU acceleration, but there's a lot of things right here. The one big thing that's missing today as of the making of this video is audio. But what I've done, and this is something I'm not gonna actually show in a tutorial here because I think it's gonna get fixed. I just wanna kinda show you what the future looks like, is the audio. Uh, right now, I'm using Simple Protocol Player, and I just hit play to this. And what I do with this, and I'm just gonna pull up a, a volume control and kinda show you what the sound would look like. You have to actually pipe your audio through a server to send it to the Chrome OS but they're actually adding this pass-through capability in very soon. Right now you can see kind of what is happening with that, that YouTube video right now. But I wanted to just kind of say, this is a problem. This is kind of a temporary workaround and it you'd have to shut down and, and restart it a little bit to get it working. But this is something that they're adding. So audio pass-through is a big getcha, but it's something that one, you can work around today, but it's not the ideal, and they're working on a little bit more seamless transition. And the virtual environment that we're in on Chrome OS is called Crostini. And Crostini allows for a lot of cool stuff coming up. Right now, you can do direct 3D, some old games and stuff. We can actually go ahead and pull up Steam and play. But Vulkan support is getting there and I have a 3700C on here, a Ryzen 3700C, so I should be able to play some older games relatively easy using the Vulkan layer very, very, very soon. This was actually just a couple days ago from Chrome Unboxed. And the big thing about this was using Arch Linux as the virtual machine, which I'll probably do a separate video on how I installed Arch instead of Debian because it is a pretty involved process but also adding in the new Venus driver right here. This gives full GPU accelerated Vulkan graphics and all through this virtual environment. So you know, there's no dual booting, anything like that. Anything you install in that Linux box will be right here. So scrolling down, we can go to our Linux apps. You can see all kinds of stuff I've installed. You see Final Fantasy VI here. You see Brave Browser. We got some Elder Scrolls, Hollow Knight, and I'll give some feedback to this here in a second. But just different things that you can just go ahead and put on your system and have it, which is very, very powerful because now instead of just this small polished system with just a Chrome browser and some Google editing tools, you now have all of the Linux library at your fingertips and properly virtualized here. I would say for the masses, probably at the end of this year or even next year at the absolute latest. Now, I haven't been able to replicate the Venus driver just yet in my Arch install, but on here, Borealis is another thing that's coming out, which is gonna be big. The Steam Deck coming out later this year I think it's gonna use a lot of this technology as well. We'll see how much of it is, but it's good to see Google kind of putting their hat in the ring with the Steam Deck. I think what we're gonna see with a lot of new Chromebooks is Steam, Back, Steam Deck competitors, really, because take these real polished environments and then add in not only the ability to play some AAA title games in a Chrome OS, but also getting into the point where we can do even more amazing things with all the application suite of Linux 
in a more polished setting. And I'm just gonna go ahead and show some of like an older game, like Final Fantasy VI, uh, more of a newer emulated port, but just as an example of what this looks like. And we'll just go ahead and load it up. All right, and then I'll just hit continue here. And you can kind of see works just fine for this specific game. Now, obviously an older game at a lower res, but totally playable. And this one, obviously, I could probably install through the Play Store instead of just using Steam, but I wanted to see a full uh, run of compatibility here. And just to give you a couple more, like maybe another fight here, just so you can kind of see, I got sprint shoes on, so this is going a little bit faster than what your normal one is. But now you get to see exactly what this looks like. Very, very playable. I'm going to go ahead and just quit out. Uh, and then you kind of get a, a feel for the possibilities of this. Now, this is using older emulation, not that new Venus hardware. If I pull up Skyrim as of today without this newer technology in, it does play like a turd. You're not going to be able to play it at all, really. I'm just going to do a couple updates here. Uh, I was on a Mesa Git driver, and I'm going to go ahead and remove it. And I'm going to go ahead, try to install Mesa this time. Yes. And yes. We'll reinstall Steam. Now, you do notice this does, uh, it's very, very snappy. There's no shenanigans I'm doing here in the background to get this to go. And I'm going to go Vulcan Radeon so I can do the Rad V version of this, uh, which would be really nice. AMD VOKs, the open source version from AMD. But a Vulcan Radeon, I think, is going to be a little bit better for us. And then uh, what I do to... You can actually just right-click and say shut down Linux, and it'll actually shut down that instance. And then the startup process is much like this. It's just like a virtual machine. It's just a little bit different. One thing I didn't touch on, if you hold Control-Alt-T, uh, which I'll pull up the browser here and just do Control-Alt-T, it does crosh, which is almost like a shell interface for developers on Chrome OS. Now, everything here is still stock. I haven't enabled developer mode yet because I know as soon as I do that, I'm going to install Linux on it. I'll probably wipe out Chrome OS altogether. Uh, that's why I don't want to go to that far just yet because I really wanted to do unlock and, and do everything I possibly can on Chrome OS because I do enjoy how integrated and, and seamless thing is. I can't say that enough of how polished and seamless this in thing is and I, I paid money for this it's not like some sponsor review most emails and stuff i get over chrome os is just crap hardware that's why i specifically went out and bought this piece of hardware because it was the only one that wasn't just like a celeron or an atom chip that's just trash but i did want to mention this shell okay so i actually tried to get skyrim working last night it did load but it was super laggy and not not very good at all I did install a native game to show you that. Instead of the emulated older Final Fantasy VI, I wanted to show like a Baldur's Gate 2 situation in here uh, with this loaded up. And I'm just going to load this and we'll see what we get. Again, very old. I'm just going to do a pre-gen here. And we'll venture forth with normal difficulty. Let's see if we notice any artifacting or anything like that. But again, pretty smooth on an old game. This is a remake. And I don't have sound right now. Let's see what we get. I almost forgot how to play this game. <laughs> it's so old. Oh my gosh, look. Oh, there we go. There's some battle. And I forgot to get weapons and stuff. <laughs> That's one thing I forgot to do. Oh well. I think we can beat this one mare for the, uh, I can. I think we can beat this one monster up. I think actually I need to cast a spell. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, there we go. Nice. It's an old game, to be expected, something low-end to play on a Chromebook, but it does show it can play games through that emulation fairly easily when it's an older game, obviously remastered. Skyrim, like I said, I loaded that up, and that's an old game, but obviously pretty graphically demanding and still not not 100%. I'll do another video kind of diving into this even more because as I get those Venus drivers installed, it's really going to make a world of difference and I can't wait to see that as I, I really am loving the actual VM and containerized systems in Chrome OS and it's something that where you can do all the things you normally would do on a Linux box in a Chrome OS box 
And that's nice for a lot of these low-end laptops or even just regular laptops like this, where it can just last for a long time and it's great for on the go, uh, normal production stuff. But even if you want to game a little bit on some older games and emulated games, you totally can. So I love that. Uh, but with that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.